I'll share with you this little vignette where it kind of hit Eileen and I. After we had started the company, after we had sold it, after we had made the medicine, and after the kids started to get better, when we really did think things were rolling well, and they were. And it was 2004. So about a year and a half, almost two years after the kids started to get the medicine, as, as difficult as a year that 2002 was, watching them really, really struggle with this disease, living far beyond what the doctors originally said, 2003, 2004 were tremendous years. And to watch the kids get stronger, and you know, as you saw in the video, to sit up again, to smile, life was getting better. They weren't just getting better. And so by the fall of 2004, we decided that we were going to start traveling a little bit more. And now I grew up in northern New Jersey. As I said, my dad was a cop uh, in, in Englewood, New Jersey. Um, but I had never been, and we'd never taken the kids to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So we decided we we're going to do this, and we we're going to pack everyone up. And we we're going to put them in the minivans and take the nurses and take the medical equipment. And by this point in our life, we can afford to go to New York for a weekend, and we get a nice hotel room, and we can have a great time. So we planned everything. We had the hospital equipment delivered, we had the nurses, everything all set up to go. And again, I'd never been to a, Saint, uh, a uh, uh, Thanksgiving Day parade, so I was excited. My wife was excited. She'd never been. And so we got there on a Wednesday late afternoon, took the kids shopping, and Megan hit the Disney store, saw a play, we went to dinner, kids went to bed in this big, beautiful hotel room. And the next morning, we get up and we're going to go to the parade. Now, of course, we're running late. It just takes longer to get them ready. We get them in their wheelchairs. We get set. We go in the elevators. And we have a whole group of people with us. We have my grandmother, the kid's great-grandma. We have an aunt, grandparents, a couple of the kid's friends who, to this day, I still don't know their names, but they were wonderful kids. We took them all to New York. And we come out of the hotel now. As I said, my dad was a, was a cop. He was an Irish Catholic cop. So I'd been to a lot of St. Patrick's Day parades in New York, but I'd never been to a Thanksgiving Day parade. St. Patrick's Day is pretty straightforward, even though you get a couple of million people at such a long parade route. You can stake your spot on Fifth Avenue and, and watch the parade. Well, the Thanksgiving Day parade runs past Columbus Circle down, uh, I guess it's maybe Seventh Avenue. So we gotta turn left from where we were, and we start walking, and we get about 150, 200 feet and we hit just this wall of humanity. And I look up, and there's hundreds and thousands and thousands of people ahead of us just on this one street on, uh, I guess it was Central Park South. And I look, and I got to stop the kids in their wheelchair. We had everybody said, hey, just hold on. And I realized that we planned for everything, except I'd never thought about how we're actually going to see the parade. So once we did that, I kind of paused, and I looked back at the kids, and I kind of gave them that dad look that, don't worry, of course I have a plan. <laughs> And I look over, and there are these blue New York City Police Department barricades providing a, a venue for emergency personnel for the middle of the street, access to the crowds. So I kind of look around, and the kids are sitting in their wheelchair, and they just can't see the parade, they can't see the floats. So I start to move the barricade. Um, the New York Police Department, New York's finest, is tremendous and very diligent, and they really, really don't like it when you move their barricades. So I attracted the attention of a particularly large lieutenant. He walked over to me and started yelling. And uh, he stopped in the middle of a sentence and looked down at the kids. And he said, just wait here. Now I'm thinking, OK, he's going to get some of his buddies to get the handcuffs to take me away. And then he comes back with two more young cops, two patrolmen. And uh, he begins to move the barricade and allows the kids to get in that open area, still about three or four blocks from where the parade was. And uh, I start to look at him just to thank him. And he, he just kind of squared his hat away and he said, follow me and stay close. So I look back at the kids and I realize he wasn't just clearing the barricade to let the kids see the parade route. He was actually going to take us forward. I didn't know how far, but he was going to take us forward. So now everybody comes through and Megan and Patrick in their chairs and little John, and we had a little puppy on Megan's lap and grandma and the aunts and the friends and everybody comes through. And I look back again, dad, and I give them the look, see, I told you I had a plan. <laughs> and we start walking forward and following these cops. And for the next five or ten minutes, they proceed to clear four city blocks of people, hundreds, thousands of people out of the way, kind of yelling, make a hole, get out of the way. And we get all the way up to the edge. And there are probably about 500 people seated right on Columbus Circle. By this point, the kids have a beautiful view. 
And he yells at all the people and says, everybody up, I need you to move. And by that point, the kids were so excited, and Megan in her 300-pound wheelchair was so excited that they were going to move one way or another. And we get all the way up to the edge of the street barricades. And the kids kind of take their, uh, their positions there. And we can see that, you know, I think, you know, whoever it was, Snoopy or Bart Simpson's going by, and Santa's only two or three blocks up. And it's just a remarkable moment in life. And one of those memories, those times you never forget. And I looked over at that, that lieutenant, and he wasn't looking at me. He was looking down at the kids. And uh, he realized that from where they were seated in their wheelchairs, they didn't have a great view of the street. The barricades were right at their eye level. So he kind of brushed me to the side, moved that last barricade. The kids moved forward onto Columbus Circle. And now my greatest fear isn't that they're going to miss the parade, it's that they're actually going to be run over by a float for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And they take their spots, and it becomes an even more magical experience. And people on the floats are kind of waving at the kids. And I turned to the lieutenant, and I said, uh, I said, thank you. You made our Thanksgiving. And he kind of looked at me, and this big burly cop, and he looked down, and he said, no. He said, you made mine. He said, thanks, and God bless walked away. I think in that moment and in the years since reflecting on it, we realized the true strength of relying on others, that even at that point in life where we had had some success in business, family, we thought things were under control, that we could manage almost any challenge thrown at us, that in that half hour of time, from when we walked out of the hotel to when the kids finally were able to see the parade, we had to rely completely on somebody else. And, and that's a remarkable lesson in life, that there are going to be those times when you least expect it, we're going to have to rely on a stranger.